Okay, let me paint the picture right now. I'm training at my gym, yeah. Champs Gym in Alcuz, awesome facility, right? Some of the best training trainers are there. They've got MMA, jiu-jitsu, they've got everything you need. And there I am training and, and, and this guy comes past me and I just, oh, hey, man, how you doing? And then I heard him talk. He, then we had a quick conversation about him living in Bondi. I then had a little bit more of a chat and that was really about it. I mm. left the gym, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, about probably 10 minutes later, they put a photo of that guy with Fadi, who owns the gym, Fadi Al Khatib, one of the greatest basketball players that Lebanon has ever produced, right? If not the greatest. And uh, then I started getting inundated with people saying, hey, Fadi, the guy that's taken a photo with Fadi, that's James Smith. Right. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I had four people message me in about two minutes. All of them were females and they worked in the sales department <laughs> of this radio station. Oh. And I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> So then I inbox James Smith. I'm like, bro, I didn't even realize this guy's huge. Uh, listen, he's a two-time best-selling uh, author. All right, he's and that's Sunday Times best-selling author. He's the host of the James Smith podcast. Uh, he's the owner of the James Smith Academy. He's known as the Gordon Ramsay of the fitness world because of his <laughs> colorful language. Um, and we've got him in studio right now. It's James Smith. Hello. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. So, <laughs> very, very cool to have you in the studio, mate. Thanks for uh, hanging out. What are you doing in Dubai? Well, it was a bit of a, a holiday. I'm, I'm having to kill time before going to America. But now you guys invite me on, I can expense the whole trip. <laughs> yeah. hey. You're working. You're working. So, for people that don't know who James Smith PT is, um, what do you what do you tell people? Who are? Like, what's the, is there a job description to what you do or what do you say? So I'm a personal trainer by trade and I did the years on the gym floor in the UK and I went to Australia after having about four years experience and realized there's a lot of information that people need and they're not going to come and sit in a gym to get it from you. So I started using social media and a lot of the kind of top fitness people without being rude, they're a bit boring mm -hmm. and they're a little bit chicken and broccoli. They're a little bit six packs and fake tan. And I thought can I just be one of the normal lads in the room and talk to people about what they need to do? And I started doing that about four years ago. And to be honest, everything's just got carried away since then. So That's it's be, it's being real. You, you, you push it out. And uh, talking to a few friends of mine that have been following your journey for a while, they're like, these are the, some of the common things they say. Oh, I love him. Oh, man, he's no, I can't say the word on the no radio. Rubbish, yeah. Yeah, he's no rubbish. He's just straight to it. Oh, he doesn't care about who you are and what you do. He'll say it as it is. Mm -hmm. So is that that's that's the message you want to just be real talk on social media? Yeah, and I think that when I was working doing eight hours of PT a day, I loved that. Yeah. So now that life has got a little bit more crazy, I'm always happy to potentially go back to that. And mm. so many people on social media almost sell out, and they're so worried about losing followers. And to them, after a couple of years, it becomes a popularity contest. Right. And for me, I was like. I, I don't really care that much. So with everything I say and I put something out, if people come back and they're offended or they don't like it, I'm like, cool, I don't need everyone in the room to like me as a PT. You only need 10, 15 people in a gym of thousands to get on with you to run a very profitable business. Mm. Sure. So I've taken that attitude. I'd rather have 15 clients that love me than have 200 people go, oh my God, the way he explained the vitamin K in an avocado was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, a lot of questions. All the phones are ringing here. We've got 24 phone lines and they're all ringing right now. Um, I want to try to get through a lot of these questions as well. But we've got Sherry Sharif with us right now. Sherry, how are you doing? Hey, good morning. You're How's on, everyone? I hope you're okay. We're doing well. You're on with James. You've got 90 seconds. Let's do this, James. Uh, Sherry, what do you want to say to uh, James? So my name is Sherry and I have a problem. <laughs> I exercise a lot, like uh, three or four hours a day because this is the... What I do, uh, I'm a GX instructor, and it's actually, it seems that I still don't uh, eat best because I, I go back home, I'm hungry, and I just feed whatever is in front of me. So what's your advice to that? I think for a lot of people that their issue is they're training too much. I think the first point of call has to be eating enough. Then once you're eating enough and you're not in a position where you're, you're under feeding whatever you're doing on a daily basis then you look to improve food quality and i always say to people like if you could quantify your diet out of 10 whether it's a three out of 10 or a seven out of 10 whatever it is just be real with yourself and find out where you're at and then all you really want to do is if you're at a four try and get to a five and mm -hmm. you might have to fight tooth and nail to get there when you're at a five you look for a six but even if you spend months at that five or even years at that five all you're ever looking is to incrementally increase it the same when people are trying to lose weight and they say I'm trying to lose 10 kilograms. I'm like, whoa, let's try and lose one. Let's do everything in our power to lose one, then let's lose one more. 
human beings, I think. Yeah, we can... like to aim it. I want to. I say that all the time. I want to lose ten kilos. Mm -hmm. So I should just say I want to lose one kilo and then start from there. And I think yeah. And and when people are looking at their diets such as yours, I mean, just look what what kind of things are on your horizon to improve that. Are you going to eat? more fruit and vegetables are you going to just try and eat more foods that rot you're going to try and have foods readily available when you get home okay. because if you haven't prepared something in that position i mean for some people it might be a pack of protein bars that could be a drastic improvement but for others that could be a reduction so okay it's very subjective between people but yeah it's about maybe not setting the the goals too big okay like that Little sherry goals, yeah. hope that help lena question for james you're on with him right now Hi, morning, morning. Um, my question to James is when we'll be bringing the James Smith live tour to Dubai. We're waiting for dates. So uh, now, I'm working on it at the for, moment. For people that don't know this, you tour a show and you sell it out. I saw pictures in Manchester. Thousands of people rock up. You're on stage and, you, and you're basically doing this sort of feel. Um, coming to Dubai? Come on, let's do it. It's something that I'm working on at the moment. We're trying to figure it out. It's pretty much a mix between an extended TED Talk and stand-up. So <laughs> love that. it, love there, it. There's so much information on TED Talks out there, but for a lot of people, sitting down for 17 minutes without being entertained is quite an ordeal. Sure. Yeah. So I was like, let's expand the content over an hour, and let's make people laugh every two minutes. Brilliant. Love it. Lena, you'd be there, 100. percent I'll be there. I'll be there. Please bring Diren with you as well. We want to see Diren too. See? Diren's my very handsome Kurdish best mate. There you go. <laughs> I love it. Haya is with us now. Haya, uh, what do you want to say to James? Morning, you guys. Um, first of all, I just want you to I just want to you to know that I recently delivered. It's been six months, and I used to be a gym freak before. Two to three hours a day, I used to work out like crazy workouts. And now I have just lost all my enthusiasm. I don't know what's wrong. I don't feel like uh, you know my old self again. So you've had a baby, and now you just can't get yourself back into the gym. James Smith, what do we do? I think six months is a very short period of time to be beating yourself up about making progress. I mean, you've now given birth to, I'm sure, an amazing child that's sleep depriving you, taking up your attention, stressing you out all the way around the clock. I think it's really important that before giving advice on like exercise or diet, we say, let's appreciate your problem. And I've had to say this to quite a lot of women over the years that there are so many women out there that maybe haven't had children that would love to have your problem, that would have loved to have lost that enthusiasm. And it, it has to be seen before we make any changes as kind of like a blessing. And it's, it's very strange to explain that to people. Then from here again, like I say, six months to try and regain everything is a short period of time. Make those goals very small, whether it's more steps, whether it's more visits to the gym, whether it's a better quality of diet. But again, don't compare to where you were before because you're a completely different lifestyle to where you were before. Well said, James. James Smith with us, by the way. James Smith PT on the gram. This guy, well known, legend as well for coming in. Charles, you used to play rugby with James. Is this true? Yes. Hey, James, Pine Point Pilgrim. So, James, can you explain to those that don't know what your connection is to the Dubai Sevens? I play with uh, the team. team. Best team best team of all time. <laughs> I, play, I play with a social side called the Pine Point Pilgrims. Uh, in Dubai? In Dubai, yeah. So I played in the Dubai Sevens maybe four times before. Oh, wow. wow. Uh, I will do anything to not have any of the stories from Dubai Sevens. <laughs> <laughs> Stay so, on, stay on, tell we've, us. Got, no we've got Charles next with us for the next 30 minutes telling us stories about James Smith. Um, that's very, very good. I did not know that. That's amazing. Um, let's talk anxiety. Let's talk rejection because it's something that you push as well. There's so many of us that live a life where you think everything's all right and, you, and people are faking it. But deep down inside, they're, they're suffering, man. And you touch on, you touch on that. I think that... Uh, especially for men. I think our uh, reality is being skewed a lot by social media. I think that even what a male physique should look like mm. is being hugely influenced by what we're being shown in media, in gyms, even in locker rooms. Uh, and there's, we're almost losing touch of what we should look like, how we should perform, all of these things. And this is having a negative effect on people's state of mental health. And, you know, being disheartened by someone you see on Instagram, in the short term, it's probably going to be like a paper cut. But then there's that saying of like death by a thousand paper cuts. Yeah. So I think that people do need to be more aware and uh, we do need to bring awareness to this space. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, Rossi and I, we both went through our own fitness journey. He was uh, a lot heavier as Believe I was. Believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. No, but, you know, Rossi dumped a lot of weight, as did I did. And, and I think we were both fitter in our... When we were really going hard, you know, we were fairly lean. You know, the line started to come out and... Then we realized, you know, we're both we're both fathers and we both have two daughters and we work a lot. And 
it's unattainable sometimes. And what I've realized now is just eating well, going to the gym five days a week. And, you know, when we're at the gym that, or the, where I met you at, which is a great facility, you will still get people coming up going, you know, I, had, I remember this guy came up to me and he was like, come on, man, you should be getting bigger. You should be doing this. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, looking at him thinking to myself, I don't need to be told yeah. that at a gym. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I feel good. And that's what I want. I want to feel good. It's not about how I look so much. I want to feel good, you know? I think uh, plateaus is this word that's used a lot at the moment. Like, James, why is my progress stopped? And a lot of the personal trainers are like, yeah, this is metabolic adaptation. And they go into all this scientific lingo. And I say to people, maybe your lifestyle has met your, your fitness endeavor. And maybe you've hit a crossroads because you're enjoying your life to a certain point. And everyone says the six pack will make me happy. And I like to stop people and say, you have to give up quite a lot of happiness to get a six pack. And to some people, they're prepared to go to the yards. But for a lot of people, in Dubai, you got fine dining, you got brunches. <laughs> yeah. You got, you got all, I had one of those Cinnabons yesterday. How good. Yeah. How, How good. good Cinnabon. Uh, in, incredible. So, yeah. so then you say to people, like, look, if I've got a corporate or a high flying CEO or, or a housewife or, or whoever it is, sometimes I say to them, look, unless you're willing to give up the, the weekend date night meal out, your progress probably is going to halt here and we should make that completely fine. And instead of people, someone coming up to you and saying you should be bigger, is them imposing their beliefs of how you should look onto you. Mm. And if we've seen anything over you know, the last hundreds, thousands of years, you should not be imposing your beliefs on other people. Yep. When people say, oh, bro, you skip leg day, you're like, oh, you're going to decide how my legs look? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So true, you so know, true. You know, I think um, as someone who who's kind of been small, all of her life the gym has always been an intimidating place because i felt like i didn't belong or i would be made fun of for being in the gym and not being able to lift or whatever it was luckily i found a trainer who's kind of changed that ideology for me but i think that's one of the big reasons why people are afraid to start working out or find a personal trainer or or get into the get healthy um is it valid to say that you don't have to pick you know fun lifestyle eat whatever you want or go to the gym there is a happy medium between the two a hundred percent and i mean a lot of the time i'm transparent that i'm going to the gym to make way for the meal that i'm gonna yeah. have later and i'm not really gonna make much of an impact but it makes me feel better and it's it's interesting what you say the gym is an intimidating place yeah i've got nearly a decade of experience the other day i got on a leg extension it wasn't it was a hamstring curl and I was like, at cool, uh -oh. at cool. I've just got, I, I'm, in a... I'm James Smith PT <laughs> as well. And I was like, you know what? Sometimes you're going to make mistakes. You're going to use a bit of equipment wrong. Sometimes I'm trying to figure out how something works. Yeah. Yeah. I'm usually using techno gym. I'm now using something else. Yeah. People at the highest level, I want to make clear, still make mistakes, still do things wrong, still put a 15 on one side and a 20 on the other. <laughs> it happens across the board, but people are so invested in what they're doing. They're not seeing what you're doing. And I think one of the best movements for women in probably the last five, 10 years is women for a lot of time have been told they shouldn't be looking to build muscle or lift heavy. But we now see this trend of women doing hip thrusts and now starting to develop their legs, especially and, and their, their glutes. And yeah. suddenly women are going into the gym and hip thrusting huge amounts of weight. And the guys are looking like, oh my God, I couldn't hip thrust that. Yeah. And there's this real onus now on women to eat for their goals, sleep for their goals. And I'm, I'm a big fan of that. And I often, when I'm in a gym and I see someone lifting an incredible amount of weight, I'll go over and I'll be like, that's great. I'm so happy to see that. I'm so happy to see you in this part of the gym. And I think that that's really, we're starting to see this progression moving forward in resistance training in the gyms. Real quickly, negativity online. Um, we all, I mean, you know, I get, I, get, I get a bit of it here as well, trying to deal with how do you deal with negativity that you may receive? Because other people, when you talk about social media, get negativity, it also happens in real life as well. How do you deal with negativity? If I'm not gonna go to you for advice, I'm probably not gonna go to you for criticisms. So okay. I always say Makes to people, if, if I'm not gonna go to you for advice, I shouldn't really take your criticisms on board. I often say to people that criticism is like walking past a rock and you wanna know how heavy it is, just don't pick it up. You don't need to, you don't need to know the weight of that. For across history, even some of like the best ph philosophy, Plato, Aristotle, these guys got so much hate as well. Yeah. Wherever you're going to excel in anything, in Australia and New Zealand especially, tall poppy syndrome. They say so much. the tallest poppy is, is cut down to make them look uniform. I think this is just something that people need to deal with in life. Like we said off air a minute ago, when you excel, you're gonna have a, a big group of people that love to see you do well, but you're gonna rub a small group of people the wrong way because they would rather people didn't do that because it makes them feel worse about their inexistence. Yeah.